right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Scott Mitchell, and here we have a talk on managing Drupal with Nginx. Specifically, this is going to be performance of an Nginx hybrid versus uh, a regular pure Apache setup. Um, you guys enjoying DrupalCon so far? I guess I can. Yeah. Keynote was awesome, right? Every time I come to one of these, it just gets better and better, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, you guys can follow along if you have the Wi-Fi. Uh, it's at inmotionhosting.com slash support slash DrupalCon. There's a capital D, capital C, slash 2015. It should be exactly the same as I have here. This is local copy. No uh, variable cannot stuff there. All right, a little bit about me. My, again, my name is Scott Mitchell. I've um, been working with the web on and off, or mostly on, since 1997. Basically started by deconstructing home pages and you know, figuring out HTML like that, learned some Perl. I uh, was already a programmer, just nothing web-based. Uh, so that's how I got my start. Since then, I've been working on and off with uh, various different technologies. Uh, I've been with my company in motion hosting since 2010. So it's just five years there. And I'm a customer community developer. And while I'm not a full-time coder, uh, we do develop some tools to help both our customers, you know, internal and external. But what we specifically do is, uh, as a customer community, we help the global customer, which is not necessarily our own. Uh, but anybody that has questions on the web about uh, Drupal or any CMS they're using, set up. So we field questions from all over. The only thing we can't really specifically address is the um, customized, you know, setup of the service. So, uh, but we do get a lot of questions from everywhere, whether it's a WAMP set up at home or even from you know, other competitors or whatever. I've uh, been working with Drupal since 2012. Uh, not really a lot of, uh, not really super deep experience there, but since uh, version six, mostly seven, because that's where most of our uh, customers are based. And we're starting to reach into eight as it goes along. Okay, now I know you guys, uh, it's 5 p.m. We have an hour block and you guys wanna eat. So we'll probably won't take the whole hour. So I'll do the best. And if that Starbucks hasn't worn off, it'll probably be pretty quick. So we'll see how that works out. Um, let's see what we have going on here next. All right, so about in motion, we've been around since 2001. So working on 15 years here. And our focus is small to medium sized business hosting. So if you have doctors or lawyers, or whatever, that have more of the business card type websites, we work with those. Uh, we have a lot of mom pop style e-commerce businesses, whether they're running their kind of own little Etsy projects or uh, you know, a little bit bigger, whether they're reselling some things. Uh, guy that cuts my grass down the street, the kid, he has his own website. So pretty much everybody has websites. And uh, we focus mostly on those guys. We do have some enterprise level, some commercial class level, but right now they're more the outliers than, than the main. You can find us at inmotionhosting.com. And uh, our specific department, my specific department, is inmotionhosting.com slash support. So if you get home later on, you find you have any questions about, uh, about this, about Drupal, uh, or anything else in general, um, no service integration, but anything else, just hit us up. It's more of a forum style where you ask the question, we come back to you. And you can follow us, of course, on Twitter uh, at inmotionhosting. All right, so what about this project before we get to the agenda? Uh, it was more of a theory for us. We hadn't really done this yet. Uh, we knew about you know, setting up a hybrid system uh, from reading that you know, other people have done it. And so we kind of wanted to see what would happen if we took basically a Joe average site and perform this test on it and see what kind of performance increase we would get and what that could mean to, to our customers or anybody that might be in the same situation. Because um, we want to help everybody. And uh, we didn't fine tune Apache or Nginx. We kind of just jumped in there with it and just, this is like the only um, big change we made. Okay, so there wasn't a whole lot of back end configuration because we want to see what happened just purely on this one instance. All right, so we did normal site and uh, this is a cPanel only setup because the, the plugin we use is working for cPanel, working with cPanel. So uh, this is something that works with hosts that have the cPanel setup. If some hosts don't work that way, but don't really have the data for that side. All 
to the agenda here, we have uh, first a quick history of Apache and Nginx. These are kind of a brief history just to show where the state of the web was at the time and kind of the background of why they were written. And then we have Apache versus Nginx. And that's not a comparison to say who's more dominant, it's just the different features they have and the ones we want to try to optimize in this hybrid model. Uh, the test setup's just a basic rundown of our spec and uh, the site and the server. And then, of course, the results. All right, going over to Apache. All right, so we want to jump with Mr. Peabody here in the Wayback Machine and go to 1995. And dominant server at the time, HTTP server, was the NCSA, written by Mr. Robert McCool. I like that name, McCool. Because I had a name like that. Uh, Microsoft also kind of jumped on the market there. Uh, the IIS 1.0 in August came out with uh, NT 3.51 was packaged with. So they were entering the fray there. Apache actually started development in early 1995. Um, it was basically built off of the NCSA model. The uh, project had ended and Mr. McCool had left the project. So we were kind of picking it up and working with it from there, which gave it a quick release date here of uh, December. So you're looking probably April, May-ish, and then moving forward to December, they released. All right, so this is kind of what it looked like with the uh, HTTP server saturation, I guess you could call it. NCSA here topping out at 52%, Apache at 5%. That's basically release month. But, uh, you know, people that were kind of involved in the project knew what was going on, and these are people that are kind of coming off the NCSA and just kind of early adopters. Uh, Sun was in there with 5%. And Microsoft, you know, they had just jumped in in August. They had just less than 1%. Uh, so shoot forward six months to 1996, uh, June. Apache is already dominating at 33% with the NCSA running at 22. Now, on the previous slide, we showed the two combined ran about 57% total. And here they have 55%. So it largely was just Apache taking over the NCSA uh, share there. Sun, of course, jumped up a little bit. Microsoft growing, nice three percent there, and the other guys hanging out at twenty-six. So websites of the nineties weren't exactly what they are today. Now, if you remember these, this site's actually still up on the web somewhere. Um, they were very bland. They didn't have a lot to worry about. There wasn't the interactivity that there is now. You know, uh, videos were rare. Um, you can see this is a normal site, very bland, very static. Uh, pictures there, not even really any columns going on. Uh, most formatting was tabular. So, real easy, not much to worry about. And the most acronym, the uh, social media was not big then, of course, but uh, everybody had a home page. You guys remember Angel City, even Angel Fire, Geo Cities, those kind of things. And uh, I guess the most active you got at the time was the spinning icons, the, the animated GIFs. You guys remember those. And one of the more famous ones. The hamster dance. You guys remember that one? Anybody? No? Oh, there you go. Um, couldn't make him dance, sorry. But, you know, still wasn't a lot going on. Very easy page. Some more recent history, though. 2005, we had Apache Peak at approximately 70% of the market share. Now imagine how much the web grew from 1996 to 2005. Now, back then, the big players were just getting on the market. But now everybody, like I said, everybody has a website. And so they had the 57% or so back in 96. They took that over to 70% plus all the growth since then. So they were definitely a dominant force. But you can see now, 2015, they're down to approximately 39, which is the lowest since 96. It's not because they're bad. It's just because now everybody needs to configure for their own specific you know, niche. And uh, so there's other options out there now. All right, so Nginx. Uh, we created the Wayback Machine for a DeLorean. Uh, so we started development here in 2002 by Mr. Igor Sasoyev. I said that right. From Kazakhstan. And he started from scratch, so uh, a little bit longer development time there. And we released in 2004. And one of the things that was created was to handle the C10K issue. Now, this is for having 10,000 concurrent connections on your site at one time. I don't know what that would do to my site, but you know, a lot of sites, they were looking forward to that. Uh, 
might crash a lot of people's sites now, even if they have, especially if they have a uh, e-commerce site. So that's one of the things we want to look at. And they want to handle a lot of traffic. Uh, so high traffic sites like Rambler, which is a uh, Russian search engine. Anybody heard of that before? One thing, yeah, I didn't hear, I never heard of it before either. So 500 million requests per day in 2008. Pretty nice, half a billion. By comparison, uh, at the same time, Google was doing 1.6 billion searches a day. But it's Google, they have their own setup. Uh, and now they're doing 3.5, so. But, so you can look in the field of needs of sites like this. <coughs> All right, so three years after release, Apache's still dominating at 56%, and Microsoft now at 32. So together, they're putting out probably almost 90%, 88% there. Uh, Sun has shrunk back down to two, pretty much on their way out. And Google popped up there at 2%. So three years after release, Nginx has, you know, under 1%. Just trying to get noticed out here. Google Web Story, yeah. I don't, they don't use it commercially, I think, but I don't know. I'm not sure what their goal is with that. But yeah, they, they're out there. Um, still run around 2% now. This is more recent data now. So forward eight years, uh, Apache at 39%, Microsoft 49%. You see a slight decrease there. But Nginx up to 15%. Now over eight years, it doesn't seem like a great, you know, huge leap. But the big story there is at the top 1,000 sites, on the web, the top 1,000 busiest sites, they are the dominant server. So they are kind of finding their niche there. Doesn't mean Apache's bad, Has just does things differently. So I'm not trying to knock Apache at all. All right, so sample sites. So we have top 1,000 sites, you know, and, and what kind of sites really is that? Um, three of my favorites, Netflix. Anybody have a Netflix account? Most of you, in my circle, it's like having a cell phone. If you don't have one, you know, you're kind of out of the loop. Uh, it's my, my go-to for movies. I'm too lazy to go to the shelf and open the box, so I just turn on the, the Netflix. Hulu, another one, anybody? It's my go-to TV spot. So with these two, I think it's cable. But uh, they run their front end there. It's off of the uh, Nginx. And then Pinterest. All right, how many of you guys have Pinterest? I'm the only one? No, it's like four or five. Okay, there you go. And don't knock it. It's full. Of my, my boards are full of food I will never eat and projects I will probably never start but I like to look at them and dream one day. But three real world examples, these guys are running Nginx and uh, doing quite well on it. All right, so Apache versus Nginx. And again, it's not a who is better, but it's more of a comparison of features. I'm just thinking pretty high level here, but. All right, so connections, how does Apache handle these connections? Well, it uses uh, NPM, multiprocessor modules. Uh, ours specifically uses the worker and it spawns these processes, all right? And each process can handle multiple threads. All right, each thread has a single connection, so this thread is uh, kind of dedicated to that one connection. With Nginx, a little different. Uh, it does spawn workers, and each worker handles thousands of connections. Uh, it uses a fast looping mechanism that checks events, and they're processed. And then once they're handled, it's removed from the loop. What does that really mean? So basically, if you're a worker, if this room was in the worker, and everybody in here was a, uh, a connection, you had something you need to you worked on, you need to spawn an event. So basically, you would raise your hand. Okay, runs through. Everybody that has their hand raised grabs through and handles the process. And once that's done, the hand goes back down. So everybody without their hand raised just kind of not ignored, but just, you know, you're glossed over because you're not needed. That's kind of how that works. So it can handle, now if everybody raised their hand at one time, there may be a problem. It's normally not the case, but that's how that works. So the static and dynamic content, that Apache on its core level there handles it by default, which is great, and passes the dynamic content over to a processor embedded to the worker instance. So ours uses mod 2PHP uh, because we use the MP NPM worker. Uh, mod PHP, also another one, and uh, swaps modules that are now as needed for the requirements. So it's like a library, a toolbox over here. Nginx also handles the static by default, and so really good at it and we're fast. But the dynamic content, it passes to an external processor. And note it fast CGI here because in a pure Nginx environment, that's pretty much the go-to file, go-to place. 
uh, it basically outsources it completely. And uh, that leaves the overhead only for a static content, which makes it more efficient. Go to configuration. So com Apache has the distributed configuration via HT access files. And love them or hate them, they're pretty nice. Now the problem is it checks each component in the path for an HT access file. So if everybody in here was a component, a directory, you have the opportunity to have an HT access file. Apache itself has its main configuration files, but as a directory or component, you can modify or change these rules through your HT access file. Apache has to ask each and every component whether it has a, a rule change and has an HT access file. So that can take some time, especially if it gets bigger and bigger. If you have small number, not so much, but as it gets larger, and you see how many files and folders are in some of these CMSs. Typically, though, they're used for URL rewrites, access restriction, authentication, things like that. Pretty URLs. Let me write. Nginx, on the other hand, has no decentralized configuration, so it doesn't have to go around and ask everybody. This doesn't mean that it can't do the same thing, it just does things differently. But because it doesn't have to go around and ask each component, do you have an HT access file? Do you have a rule change? Do you, do you, do you? Then it makes things a little faster. So it increases performance. It's also better security because only the admins, the admins configure this. So you don't have to worry about too many people having their hands in the security department. However, Apache can turn that off. So if you have a concern with that, about the security issue, you can turn that off in Apache. Apache uses modules, kind of like Drupal. So you can go in and enable, disable them. You can turn them on, turn them off. If you have something you need to use, turn it on. It's great. Uh, if you're done with something, turn it off. Nginx doesn't do that. So the modules are compiled into the core. So every time it has to add a new function with a module or remove a function, it's going to recompile it. Okay, so that's the, the rundown there. So what does an Apache Nginx hybrid look like? Other than ugly? I don't know. We want to use Nginx in front here as a reverse proxy, that's what you want. Uh, it's going to handle all the client requests. It's kind of like the uh, reception. Knows where to place things, tells things where to go. We want to use our speed here as serving a static content. So your CSS, your JavaScript, your, uh, your images, your HTML. And we want to pass the dynamic content off to Apache. It has to outsource it anyway, so we want Apache to do its job over there. Now, we could use, like I said, the C fast CGI and just do it you know, straight into next. But we want this to be easy to install. Uh, so anybody here wants to do this at night, I mean, this is the night before you get back home, you finally want to do it. We want it to be very quick and easy to do without having to you reconfigure a bunch of stuff on your server. Which makes easier configuration for content management systems. Drupal specifically, because we're talking about that here. Um, so when you create, you install your Drupal, it creates the HC access file and has all the, you know, configuration there. Got your URLs turned on and everything. So if you add this Nginx in here, you don't have to change that. You don't have to set up the configuration to work with Nginx. And no need to change hosting companies in most cases. Most cases mean if you're with a shared host and uh, that's all they have, this probably isn't going to work for you. You're going to need a VPS, a dedicated server, uh, root access to do this. Uh, so in those cases, you might need to change. But if you're uh, in a host that has all three of those, or at least VPS and dedicated, you can certainly do this. And the idea is uh, if you're on the cusp of having to Let's see, change if the system support system or the system admins are trying to urge you to possibly upgrade, change host, whatever. Uh, this can hopefully buy you some time. So ultimately, though, pretty much if you like your host, you should be able to stay with your host. So the test itself, we ran Apache Bench benchmarking tool, and that's what gave us our, our data here. And uh, the data itself, like I said, we ran for speed. Just wanted to see what's going on. Well, Bunch of other things, a couple other things in addition to that. And we vary the concurrent users between 100 to 150 and 250. So just like 100, 150, 200 people, 50 people visiting your site simultaneously. We also vary the request 
uh, for 2,500, 5,000, 10,000 requests. And again, we're trying to stay pretty normal. We first started to do it with two different servers, but then we went, we didn't want any configuration or uh, hardware differences or anomalies to play any part in this. So we stayed with the same physical server, which is you know, a standard BPS that has uh, an S running an SSD, eight gigs of RAM, uh, my server, as it would be. And we ran a Drupal 7 test site. Again, uh, we've moved, worked mostly with Drupal 7, so we wanted to stay with what most of our customers use. We basically, we didn't do a Hello World site, because if you run anything on the Hello World site, it's gonna work. Uh, so we built a recipe site. There's about 10,000 or so recipes on it. We gave it a theme, we put the, you know, your, your panels, your views, your chaos tools, all that kind of stuff in there. It's normal Drupal stuff. Added a few other modules. Um, I say a theme, we changed the theme. Just make it a nice little site. Uh, but nothing e-commerce-y or anything like that, but just kind of a normal, everyday kind of site running it. Now this is the plugin we used, NGINXCP. If you can read that, you can find it at nginxcp.com. And it's free, that's one thing we, want, we picked. Um, again, we want everybody to be able to do this. We want this to be very easy for everyone. And sometimes cost is a factor. So free was the one of the reasons uh, my partner, who's not here today, uh, helped us uh, pick this uh, thing. Uh, DDoS protection is really largely because of the Nginx, the way it handles HTTPS, uh, HTTP requests. Uh, so that's helpful. This is These are listed as features on this website as well. So um, it does have a WHM interface, which makes it easy if you're using the Apache, um, I'm sorry, cPanel setup. So this would be for compression. And cPanel service monitor support, so no need to specifically turn it on or off uh, individually. PHP write compatible. And you can manage which domain uses Nginx and which domain uses Apache via SSH. And again, that's Nginx CP if you guys are interested. Okay, and the installation is super easy. Um, I'm not sure how technical most of you guys are uh, on the back end side of things. This is literally everything we needed to do. Seven steps. Uh, you don't have to know what the code means, but just real quick, I'll run it. It's easy. Uh, we just change directory. Then we grab the file, open it up, change to a new directory, run the install, add executable permissions, and then activate it. Our customers specifically will have a little bit shorter because we took the first five and made it into a, our own script. It just compressed them into one, so you can really do it in three steps. The uninstall is basically just as simple, but you can also just turn it on and off. So something you can try, test it. If you like it, great. You can keep it. If not, you can go right back to where you were without having to worry about anything. I don't know what we're looking for here. <laughs> All right, so first results. Uh, Apache kind of supported us in this. I'll show you how it works. But we had 100 users, and we weren't like, we were going for speed, and there's 2,500 requests processed here in 26.5 seconds. Um, 150 set up to 41.3, but sadly 250 did not finish. We had configured Apache to hold 250, but it got pretty close, but just died out before it finished the 2,500. And uh, sadly, you're gonna see that occur pretty often in terms of Apache. The Nginx hybrid, which is literally just laying right on top of it. Uh, we had some speedy stuff going on here, 100 uh, at 9.5 seconds. And that was pretty, that's faster than I was expecting, to be honest with you. And then we ran several instances of this. So it wasn't, they weren't always exactly the same. Uh, this is one example, but uh, they were fairly consistent in how it worked out. Went to 150, up to 19.7. Then 250, slightly, slightly faster, but it did complete, which was, uh, good thing. So what I can show here is that Nginx obviously had a lot faster time processing these guys, whereas Apache um, did do the first two. Uh, they both had the same kind of uh, arc at first, the first two, and I'm not sure I've what the Apache one would look like at 250, but uh, so you kind of level off there. They do work within a range, but sometimes we ran them, they look a little bit differently, but they still pretty much fell within the same range. In a few milliseconds, so a few seconds, I'm sorry. So test two, we ran with 5,000 requests, and uh, with Apache, we ran 44.8 with 100, and then 47.9 with 150. Again, with the 2,500, uh, 250, I'm sorry, it did not finish. 
the hybrid, just laying on top of it, ran here at 33.8 seconds per 100 users, 36.1 for 150, and then actually faster for 250. I don't know why. We ran this a few times, and it did occasionally happen this way. You know, we were happy with it. So again, you can see the same thing. You know, there's a big disparity there between uh, the Nginx and the Apache handling its request. And uh, again, like it's, it's a range, so the curve is not really a big concern. But we did run it a few times and kind of saw the same kind of thing going on. So we went for 10,000. All right, 100 users running 10,000 requests. We got 111 here for 0.3 with Apache. 150 users, we had 104, so we went down a little bit, still within that range kind of thing. And then again, 250 just died out on us. But the hybrid was quicker here with 100 users at 68.5, 150 users at 64.8 faster, and then uh, 250 at 76.1. Gave us a nice quick flow like that. The interesting thing is they both dipped from 1 to 150. I was wondering about that, scratching our heads, but it was consistent. And uh, again, you see the same thing, where the difference between Nginx hybrid and the Apache kind of maintained its uh, difference there. So the results here, we had 2,500 tests. Uh, the hybrid was twice as fast as the Apache. Uh, we weren't really expecting that. We were looking, expecting more in a third, you know, 35% range. Uh, like we got for the 5,000 tests. It was consistent there with 35% faster. And then the 10,000 tests came in also at 35 to 40% faster than Apache. Plus the hybrid was able to process all the concurrent user levels versus Apache dying out with the 250. All right, so what does this all mean? Uh, the increase in overall performance was, was gained by layering in some Nginx on top of it. Uh, definitely able to handle a higher level of traffic. So if you have a site that may be getting uh, some kind of local media attention, or you have a client maybe gets local media attention, radio plug in the local news, they get mentioned on the Oprah, it's probably going to crash it, but we've seen that before. But uh, still might hold it a little bit longer before it crashes. That'll help. Uh, it's really easy to toggle on and off, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, you know, if I set this up and it doesn't work the way I want it to or doesn't perform for you the way it did for us, you know, do I have to go through a whole mess to turn it off? Not, not the case here. Uh, no need to reconfigure Drupal, which is always nice. So anytime you move a site, even from one, you know, Apache server to another, you guys can understand that can be a pain anyway. So no need to reconfigure Drupal to work with this, uh, this plugin. Uh, I just kind of you know, set it and forget it, but kind of plug right in, plug and play, basically. All right, you may save some time and money by increasing the time before you upgrade a server. Like I said, this is uh, something we want to test for our customers. We have a few, uh, a few being a certain percentage of them that are always kind of riding that line, and they call in when they um, kind of hit the limits. And inc uh, definitely uh, upgrading is one of their options, but, uh, you know, if you don't have the money yet, or just kind of want to optimize yourself a little bit, this can definitely save you three, six, maybe 12 months of time before you have to increase or I have to upgrade. Now, there was some concern from our system admins when we ran this test about memory. Uh, Nginx was going to be faster, but was it going to cause any memory problems? And uh, we saw, this is, we had an 8 gig uh, server there. With doing the tests that we had, we maxed it out at about 3 gig. Um, so not too bad. It did go up, probably doubled the RAM that we were using with the Apache, but it was still well within the VPS limits. So it wasn't a concern of overloading the node or overloading that particular container and causing issues again with the system admins. So that's kind of what we we're trying to avoid altogether. And as far as um, the number of requests that processed and didn't process, it was pretty consistent between both. Uh, so we didn't, have, we didn't really miss that because it was very consistent. Let's see. Yeah, that, that Starbucks was still kicking, I guess. <laughs> that was it. But uh, if you guys 
have any questions on that. It's just more like I said, a high level test to see what's going on. We're going to do more tests with uh, different aspects of um, hybrid versions for our customers as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's an application that's very intense in the configuration in Apache. Right, no, it's gonna, it's gonna work off, because it's passing down to Apache, so Apache's still gonna run and do the dynamic stuff, run all the rewrites, takes the access files and everything just like it normally does. Nginx CP is a, yeah, it's a plugin for a cPanel that puts Nginx in the front. So Nginx grabs all the stuff from them first, and it sort of runs the static content, and then passes the other stuff down to uh, to, uh, to Apache. So Apache, remember uh, in the first part I talked about Nginx running and it passes things, it outsources out to say pass CGI. So Nginx is in the front, and it grabs you know all the static content as it comes in, and then anything left over, which is like the dynamic stuff, then it passes down to Apache. So Apache doesn't even really see it. So I'm in the background, sorry. Not that we saw. We just uh, we just installed it straight uh, with the like I said, this is real default kind of installation for Apache. We didn't have to increase the configuration or, or change it really for Apache. Um, Right, it had like the 200 codes, I guess you would say, and the non-200 codes. I d we did. Um, those were consistent among both of them. Um, that was speed, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We didn't test that. Uh, that's probably one of our future tests. Uh, we do want to test that. This one was specifically because we run uh, Apache as, as, as far as we host, and we don't have a lot of Nginx customers, pure Nginx customers. So this is like a first step for a lot of these guys, and uh, we definitely want to test that and see how it runs just with pure Nginx and uh, get that as an option to our customers as well because uh, we have a lot of people that, so that do ask for it. So, But this is a first step for those that maybe aren't looking to completely reconfigure or completely do another thing yet. And, uh, buy them some time at least until they can until they can come up with uh, either an upgrade or by this time we might have the other option out for them. Yes. We didn't use that. Uh, it's the, uh, there's actually a reason for that. My partner told me. <laughs> but um, as far as like this is our standard configuration. So we went ahead because we use Worker. Um, I, there's actually a couple of technical reasons we use Worker over Event. Um, it's off the top of my head right now, I don't know, but. Right, right, and I, I, to be honest with you, I don't think we're running 2.4 right now, and that's probably the biggest reason, but yeah, Worker, we, Worker I think is a little more, um, oh, with, um, we use Worker because of the, uh, which has to use 2PHP, but uh, because they're a DSO option, that's why we use Worker versus the uh, pre-fork, but as far as the event, we haven't tested the event yet. We did. We just ran it straight like you know. That could too. That could very well uh, come to a lot of it. Um, again, we just try to create what normal customers are going to run with, and a lot of them, for some reason, uh, don't want us to. Well, they want the server side to be as quick as possible before they implement the caching kind of thing. So we're trying to go with their request and say, okay, what can we do for them first? Um, even though this seems like might be a little bit more involved in turning on caching. 
but a lot of them want to like maybe it's a crock pot kind of thing not to set it and forget it kind of thing and if we can help them get this or even do it for them then uh that helps them out and the caching is definitely involved we just didn't want to run uh we do want to do all these different tests and put those results out as well that's a definitely um definitely in the works uh just for this particular one we do want to do that <laughs> uh, you you could I, I don't actually know uh, that's something I could check into um, definitely uh, if I get your information I can definitely check into that and I want to put it on the test yeah test results as well uh, mm -hmm. I'll definitely check into that uh, we will I do want to post all the different data that we didn't put up here because, like I said, this was just more concerned with the speed level uh, with the uh, memory issues I, s I mentioned and the consistency of the non-return codes or, or the non-return successes. But I do want to put all that out there. So I will check into that, too, and put that up there as well. And yes. We didn't run against Varnish yet. Uh, uh, we wanted to, again, uh, it's just another test we haven't run yet. Um, but we, it's definitely uh, another thing because um, we want to test all the different options here. And Varnish is definitely one of the options. The thing with the Varnish is, as far as their VPSs go, it's definitely going to really work against the memory of the, of the module, of the nodes. Um, so we want to wait to do Varnish as a second step, maybe, because it really, it really increases the memory usage. It seems to. I mean, it doesn't have a problem with you running everything. Uh, any configuration changes we made, uh, it works. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty drupal. If we added like the different URLs, rewrites, or something like that, or the uh, particular uh, authentication, then things seem to handle that pretty well. Yes. We did not. <laughs> we did not try that out. <laughs> That's definitely something we probably should try though. Say again. Right, we will. Yeah, that's another thing we can put in there as well. You guys ready? Appreciate you guys coming out. Yeah, they have. Uh, you just, just do everything correctly. 